I'm Nate Phelps from Wisconsin Media, or Gannett, Wisconsin Media. We're here with Taras Lysenko of a and Recovery, and behind us is an FM2 Wildcat uh, that they recovered from Lake Michigan late last year. T Taras, can you tell us a little bit about the aircraft, how you guys went about recovering it, uh, a little bit of the history? Yeah, uh, well, the aircraft crashed uh, December 28, 1944. The pilot, uh, Ensign Forbes, was, was the pilot. I believe it was his third takeoff. His engine quit while rolling down the deck, so he went right off the front end of the ship. Um, it, it appears to me that the ship actually hit him. I don't know how he survived. He must have had remarkable composure, probably held his breath, went down probably about 30 feet because that ship went over him. Um, got out. He became a successful attorney. He, he continued on, went on to USS Yorktown, and then, then after that went, went back to college and became a successful attorney out in California. Um, had two children, and uh, he died a few years ago. We located the aircraft actually during the 90s, um, but um, you know there's a whole lot of things. Money has to be raised to recover it and restore it, so it took all the way until last year, and we had the money was raised to recover it, and um, so we went out and in the beginning of winter, and we recovered her, lifted her out of the water on Pearl Harbor Day, December 7th. What what are the plans going forward in terms of restoration things like that? Where where is this destined to, or where would you like to see the airframe end up? Well, it's it's the immediate plans. A week from today, it will be it'll it'll arrive at the Kalamazoo Aviation History Museum. It's also known as the Kalamazoo Air Zoo, and they have a team of about sixty restorers that will begin work on her immediately. Um, so it'll take a few years for them to do that, maybe four years. And from there, um, it is up to the director of the National Naval Aviation Museum who will get her. There are entities, museums, vying to get her from, from that. She won't stay at Kalamazoo because Kalamazoo has an actual, they have, their, they have a wildcat already. You know, she's a wildcat. Um, but they, they have a very good restoration shop, and they would like to restore her, and so that's where she's headed next. In terms, too, of, of recovering these, the, the company you're with, A&T, this is, this is what you guys do. You've done a lot of it. What's it like when you, when you, when you pull an aircraft, maybe specifically this one out of Lake Michigan? What's, what's the feeling and what is that sensation like to see an aircraft emerge from uh, whatever state it may be in? Well, you know, we're, we're like the coolest dudes on earth at that moment, right? You know, so, um, you know, it's, um, you know, there's a whole lot into it. There's a whole lot of permitting and a whole lot of approvals, and it, it takes hundreds of people to, to get one aircraft lifted up off the bottom, uh, you know, and then hundreds to get it restored, and it just takes lots of people. So, you know, that, that whole, you know, there's almost a feeling of relief when we see it go on the truck. <laughs> you, know, um, you know, the whole, the whole thing is just a constant rush. You know, it's, it's, it's a thrill the whole way through, but, um, you know, it's not any instant jolt of adrenaline unless like we're we're thinking something's going to break you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah gotcha gotcha in terms too i mean you've had a lot of interest out here today what, what are you hearing from people that are stopping by i mean it's been a pretty steady flow of people reading the history and the things associated with us what's been what's been reaction out here at ea to uh to, to the fm2 well i i think uh in general everybody is impressed from the point of view is when you look at like the um the project is under the naval history and heritage command and the Part of the mission of the Naval History and Heritage Command is to make Navy history come alive for the public. So this is coming alive. So the interesting thing about it, though, are the people who have misconceptions and stories about what went on. And we have all the history boards and stuff out there that kind of tell the truth. So it's kind of fun to hear people who haven't really seen the story of what went on in Lake Michigan back, you know, 70 years ago and what goes on with the recovery operation. And they actually have, you know, we have divers here. We have, uh, you know, I'm here. We have people that actually know the whole recovery thing. And so it's, it's kind of interesting to see people that they're like, wow, wow. You know, this is, I'm really learning true naval history. It is coming to life. Gotcha. So, you know, that's, you know, it's kind of fun. Gotcha. So. Gotcha. Well, great. Well, we've been here with, 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 with Taras Lysenko of a and Recovery. They, uh, they pulled this uh, FM2 Wildcat out of Lake Michigan late last year. It's awaiting restoration. It's one of the uh, uh, many aircraft that you can see out here at EAA over in the next week. Um, you can continue to watch for EAA coverage on uh, Gannett, Wisconsin media sites uh, throughout the state as well as PressGazette.com. And uh, stay tuned to the websites for more live coverage that we'll have both today and uh, throughout the week. So and this is the coolest thing at the whole Air Ventures fly-in. This is the best thing. Well, well, great. I'm Nate Phelps from uh, Press Gazette Media. You guys have a good day. Thanks.